Hello and welcome. This is Mr. Bus. So in this video, obviously I'm going to walk through the lab here. The lab is uh, a, a case study of a family that um, has Huntington's disease, which is an interesting case study. Huntington's is an interesting uh, genetically inherited disorder to study. It is a sad and tragic disease. So although I'm going to say it's an interesting one to study, families affected by Huntington's, it is uh, it is it is difficult to deal with. Um, it's a disorder that um, can, um, the onset, the beginning of it, can be in young people as well as uh, middle aged or elderly. And the genetics of the disease will determine uh, when your, your onset begins. Um, the HTT gene is what we're gonna study and within the HTT gene, we're going to study how many uh, repeats of a trinucleotide uh, codon of GA, CAG there would be. Uh, so if it's a lower number of like 10 to 35 copies of the CAG repeat, um, you're not going to have Huntington's. But if it's 36 or more, or it says in the reading here 40 to 120, uh, you're going to potentially have... A, Huntington's onset, and the more CAG repeats you have, the earlier you'll get it. Okay, so uh, when we talk about the genotype of this disorder, it's usually like um, a number comma a number, and that would be like uh, six CAG repeats or 12 CAG repeats, and so on. So um, number one, if an individual's genotype were 50, uh, 12 comma 52, um, it only takes... So the 12 would not provide enough CAG repeats for Huntington's, but the 52 would. You don't add them together, you just take them each individually. So 52 is more than uh, 35. So this person would have Huntington's if they lived long enough to develop the disorder. And what is the chance they will pass Huntington's onto their children? Well, 50-50. Uh, there's um, a 12 and a 52, and there's a 50-50 chance that... Um, uh, the 52 gets passed on. And in fact, the 52 might e even be passed on as like a 55 or a 60. The number can mutate and actually increase in length. And so um, you typically might see inheritance of a Huntington's in a family start to become inherited younger and younger. Okay, so in this lab, we are going to look at and identify the inheritance of Huntington's disease through the HTT gene in four individuals. Okay, so in the case study, we have four people. Nathaniel and Jean are going to be the parents of two children, Peter and Kim. Okay, and in Nathaniel, the father, ends up um, having the onset of Huntington's about a year after Peter and Kim are born. And he, it's not... It's not shown in, or described, but he's 33 years old at that time. So he's 33. He's got twins, Peter and Kim. They're fraternal twins, meaning they um, were the products of two separate uh, eggs being fertilized. Okay, not, they're not maternal. They're not identical twins, obviously. And so Nathaniel and Jean are concerned, obviously, about their children possibly inheriting Huntington's. And so their whole family is getting genetically tested. So Nathaniel, Jean, Peter, and Kim all provide DNA samples. And so before we uh, analyze the, um, the gel electrophoresis products, we have to first really understand what's going on and how, how we're going to then take those samples. So if, if you obtain the DNA samples from Nathaniel, Jean, Peter, and Kim, um, what are we going to do with those samples? And how are we going to identify the inheritance of Huntington's? So that's where we're going to look at this page here and take a closer look at um, how the, the DNA looks in that region of the gene, okay? So their, their DNA would be PCR amplified, polymerase chain reaction amplified, before we can run it on a gel. And so in the lab, uh, prior, we'd have to have primers made. So we would have to have, like, this is a DNA sequence here, even though it's uh, only shown single-stranded. We know DNA is double-stranded, so it's only showing one of the sides. But we would have forward and reverse primers engineered and synthetically produced. So this would be one primer, okay? And then this is the other primer. So the bold uh, regions, underlying regions, 
are the primers. And this whole section here is not the whole ATT gene, HTT gene. This is just a section of the HTT gene. Um, and it's, it's an important section because it's the place where the CAG repeats occur. So we'll talk about that in just a minute. So in PCR, step one, denaturation. What would actually happen is uh, we would heat the sample in a PCR machine to separate the two uh, sides into single-stranded pieces. And then we would cool it to allow the primers to anneal. And so um, if we cool it and this primer anneals to this section, this, this uh, is just showing the primer region. So the primer that anneals to this might actually be like, you know, T, C, C, G, G, and so on, but it's just showing the primer region. So this primer anneals, we'll call that the forward primer, and it's going to uh, then uh, tack polymerase. Uh, heat tolerant DNA polymerase is going to form the other side of this, and it's going to um, go in this direction. Okay, so that's step three, extension. And the extension also happens on the other side. So the other side of the single strand of DNA the other primer, the reverse primer, would be uh, annealed, and then TAC polymerase would then uh, make the other strand in this direction, okay? You do get a little extra DNA the first couple times you do this, um, but eventually what happens is if you run this over and over and over again, and every time you're doubling the DNA, eventually what you end up getting is you end up getting many, many copies of the DNA between the primers and up to that point, okay? And you end up not getting any of this extra DNA that's after the forward or reverse primers, okay? So that, so we're PCR amplifying a region of the HTT gene. So question two or statement two says, highlight the region of instability CAG repeats. So if you look at this section of DNA and you look for CAG repeats, you might find a couple CAGs, but you're gonna find a lot of them together. So notice starting right here, see those all? There's a whole bunch of them. That doesn't stop there, it continues on in the next row. So I'm gonna highlight all the CAGs in that region of instability. Okay, so there's, oh, I guess I'll make it a continuous region highlighted. Okay, and I stop right there because that's no longer a CAG, it's a CAA. And even though there's a few other random CAGs throughout, we're not gonna count those because they're not part of the continuous region. Okay, so I have highlighted the region of instability, so to speak. And again, that's where if I have like 36 or more of those CAGs, then uh, that's a genotype that's gonna result in Huntington's. And if I have less than 30, Five or less, then it's not going to result in Huntington's. So let's fill out the table here. In this uh, in this section of DNA shown, what's the total number of base pairs in the PCR amplified product from primer to primer? Okay, from primer to primer, starting with this adenine and ending with this cytosine. You count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and so on. This part of the column. What's the number of base pairs on the CAG repeat area? So now that question is asking, starting with this C and ending with that G, how many CAGs are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. So count those up. And this column says, how many CAG repeats are there, not CAGs individually, but how many trinucleotide CAGs are there? So for instance, one, two, three, four, five, oops, five, six, seven, and so on. And then for the last column, we have to do a little math. So go ahead and do that on your own, and then I'm gonna show the answers. Okay, so check your answers now. The total number of base pairs, if you counted them up correctly, would have been 171 in the PCR amplified region of DNA. The total number of base pairs on the CAG repeat section 
if you counted up all the CAGs, is 57. How many trinucleotide repeats are there? CAG, one, CAG, two, and so on. There's a total of 19 repeats in this section of DNA. Well, that would be good news to someone because that would mean that that allele for the HTT gene would not result in Huntington's. And then what is the size of the HTT gene in base pairs if you subtract all of the repeats? That's saying, if I took out this highlighted CAG section, what would be left? So 57, 171 minus 57. One fourteen. And we're going to need to know that number when we analyze the DNA sections from Nathaniel, Gene, Peter, and Kim. We need to know that if they didn't have any CAG repeats, then they would have 114 base pairs in their PCR amplified region. And so we're going to basically take whatever size DNA fragments they have, subtract 114 to figure out how many C's, A's, and G's they have, and then divide by three to get how many repeats are in there. Anyway, so that's important to know. So now what you're going to see next is going to be me running the gel, but I just wanted to show this page really quick. Um, I'm going to be placing the samples according to the sample loading chart where I'm going to have well one will have the, the marker, two, three, four, and five will have Nathaniel, Gene, Peter, and Kim's PCR amplified region of the HTT gene. And um, after that, I'll, we'll go through the results of what the um, the gel electrophoresis results would look like.